Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody back to Alabama Care. <clears throat> and this week we have Tammy Moore of Full Life Ahead and Mrs. Gwen Brown of the Disability Rights and Resources in Alabaster. Um, and we're going to be talking about the Full Life Ahead Camp and what it does uh, can do for families and people with uh, disabilities. Um, so at this point, I'd just like to hand it over and let you both introduce yourselves. I'm going to put this microphone a little bit closer. Well, I'm Tammy, and I'm the executive director of the um, Full Life Ahead Foundation. I've been here a little over four years, and um, I'm here because Full Life Ahead changed my daughter's life. Um, just what they did for her, what they did for the family, giving us our hope and our connections for her to have a full life. And so um, her father and I have benefited greatly from that. It affects the whole family, her brothers, everything. So. It's, it's a great thing. So I'm here because of that, and I believe wholeheartedly with all that's in me that we can repeat that process with other families, and it's my passion to be able to do that. Awesome. And Mrs. Brown? Uh, of course. I'm a peer advocate with Disability Rights and Resources. I've been in there for about seven years and um, love what I do. We help to empower uh, people with disabilities to live as independently as possible in their communities. And uh, I will say quickly, you know, thanks to participating in the Full Life Head Foundation at their camps, that was like um, an awakening for our family when we started participating early. Life changing. It is. Life empowering. It is. I, I was really, I'll say we, but you know, our family was able to really catch what it does indeed mean to have hope. Cause mm. they really empowered us to have hope. Yeah, that's really what it is about, is that hope. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter, and she doesn't mind me um, saying these things. As she grew up, um, I'll start by the fact that she had a very rare syndrome. And when she was born, she wasn't supposed to live. And when she lived, she wasn't supposed to walk or talk or even eat or, you know, on her own or ever. She had a um, G-tube. And when she went to school, she wasn't supposed to be able to learn. Um, so she talked. I remember the first time she told me she loved me. Oh, wow. I was driving down the interstate, and she was in the back. She was so tiny, she was still in a car seat. She was about five years old. Mm. And she said, I love you, Mommy. I went, almost had a wreck. I mean, you know, it was so emotional. I mean, you know, I've never heard those words from that child in five years. So she spoke, and she's a Jabber Jaws. Um, she talks more than her mom. <laughs> and, um, and she can eat like her mom. I can't say she eats more than me because we both love food. Uh, she's a, our, our little piglet. It's sit on us. That's also genetic. Um, and she walks. She's had lots of surgeries to make that possible. And I have to give a shout out for Shriners. I mean, they were such a blessing to our family and to Kelsey. Um, they did what others said I couldn't do or couldn't be done. And um, now what is Shriners? I've never heard of Shriners before. Shriners, um, tell them about Shriners. So they're, they're what I think they are. You know, this is my description. They're a, a bunch of great old men <laughs> who wear goofy hats and sell toilet paper squares to raise money to run these awesome hospitals for children. Um, there's uh, orthopedic hospitals and there's burn hospitals oh. and um, they do amazing things for these kids um, and it's all encompassing kind of hospital where they do different yeah. it's really focused okay uh, it's an orthopedic hospital mm. and it is a burn and burn hospitals so now they're my I think they do serve cleft palate they did when Kelsey was there it's been a while now because she's out she's um, no, no longer able to go because of her age, mm -hmm. but um, they, they did a lot of surgeries and a lot of therapies and a lot of things that um, we couldn't get done here yeah. for her, and they never charged us one time. Really? Yes, and they accommodated us with travel and with wow. a place to stay when we were That's in amazing. Greenville, or we had to go to um, St. Louis for surgery, and we were there for almost a month. And um, they just take care of family, and they take care of these kids, and make um, ability and all possible. It's awesome. But so she walks and um, 
talks and eats, and she wasn't supposed to learn. And that's when Flo Off Ahead um, first came into our lives. Mm. Um, the school was um, throwing crayons at her, pretty much. It's the only way I can describe it. She had this number on her forehead called an IQ, and um, it was lower than what they thought was worthy of teaching. I, I just have to say that it's a horrible thing to say, but it's what was really happening there, and she was in a self-contained classroom. But she had loved books forever. It was always, since she could hold anything, she just loved flipping the pages and for us to read to her. And um, and I tried to advocate with the school, but I wasn't really getting anywhere. And so I'd heard a full life ahead. And they came in and um, advocated at Kelsey's IEP that they just give her opportunity to learn to read. Just give her the chance to yeah. teach her and we'll see what happens kind of theory, you know. <laughs> I was like, we wow. <laughs> let her decide that. Yeah, you know, Give her, her the opportunity yeah. and let her decide what she wants to do. Yeah, so they took her and put her in the general ed classroom with an awesome second grade teacher. And Kelsey was reading within six months. Oh. She wow. had that's crazy. She was very motivated and had strong desire. So I mean, I think that's what's gotten her through most of her life is her own motivation and desire to um, accomplish things, and you know, a lot of prayer and, and love and support from her family and community. But so you know, I bought into full life ahead. Or, yeah, that's know, a huge change <laughs> going from just being in a classroom where they won't, you know, they, exactly. they wouldn't give her a book to, uh, you know, full life head stepping in and being like, hey, just give her the opportunity. Let her yes. decide what she wants to do. Yes. Let her show you what yes. she can do. Six months later, she's reading. Right. I'd be all in too. Yes. Right. So we're, you know, <laughs> we started one of the camps and all of that and learned so much more and really got our hope. I mean, why a gift? Because she's always been told what she'd never do. Mm. And so we're learning, well, <clears throat> she can do a lot of things. And um, we just find those gifts and strengths and desires and things that she has in her heart that we live in God-given purpose. And she has those just like everybody else yes. on this planet. And um, the things she has done and the places she has gone. <laughs> and places she will continue. Amazing. Yes, it's just amazing. And we had um, Keith Richards, uh, the founder of Tzatziki's Mediterranean Restaurant, on a few weeks ago. Maybe it was about a month and a half ago. But she works at Tzatziki's Mediterranean Restaurant here in Birmingham. Which location is it? Is the At UAB. At UAB? Yeah. yeah. So she goes from, you know, in second grade, first grade for they weren't, they won't give her a book all the way through graduation. And now, you know, she's working at uh, a local restaurant here in Birmingham. Yeah. She was also unemployable, according to many professionals, as she came up through high school. So that was another thing. I'm like, you know, back to camp. I got to call Judy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, because I don't know what to do here. But that's the joy. Yeah. That's the joy of him. Yes. You know, because, you know, it takes me back here. You talk about, you know, Kelsey, when our family, you know, during the time of our lives, you know, trying to seek help. And, of course, you know, we had an amazing advocate, you know, Susan Ellis with People First mm -hmm. of Alabama. Mm -hmm. And we wind up participating in camp. And it was like the first time, our true first time as a family, that we were like, we've heard about what's possible. But then being able to meet other families and to hear the stories and realize I'm not alone, you know, in what I may be going against. And, and I can sincerely, you know, me and my husband remember having a one-on-one because you can sign up with one-on-ones, have one-on-ones with different individuals. And we signed up with Henry. <laughs> and I remember Fresh the day, voice. yes, <laughs> love, love the Barclays. And so I remember that day we went down to the little picnic bench area and we we're having this conversation with Henry and he's asking us questions, but he asked us one question that made me and my husband sit back and it was hard to swallow. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his exact words, but it was pretty much helping us to think if we were to die that day, mm -hmm. who would take care of our son? What would he do? And we realized at that moment, you know, we hadn't thought about it. You know, we had put him in our own little box, protective box. And, you know, going to camp helped us to really say, you know, we got to move him out of this box because the world also puts him in a box. And we're not, you know, helping him. We're not being, you know, any better if we do that. And so by participating in camp, we were able to hear speakers talk. We were able to 
see individuals come in who had disabilities and it's like their diagnosis did not dictate or you know cause them to have any roadblock on what they wanted to accomplish and in our minds we began to take the information go back home and say you know what we have a greater focus now mm. you know we have we have a responsibility to our son a responsibility to our family and we began to crave the camps and they were Me so too, yes <laughs> and they were so awesome to the point that when we started participating and it was interesting what took place with our family um uh, we have three children and they were here about camp coming up and they would say Oh, mom, please check us out of school. We want to get there. We go. <laughs> and we was like, wow, you know, this is incredible. You know, there's a place that as a family, they really want to go together because each of them were getting something from the camp. You know, even our youngest one, because at first we weren't sure. It was like, well, you know, he has a lot of health issues. And our oldest son um, that we really were focusing on, he has autism. But then the youngest one, you know, after we shared information and we was like, we don't know, will somebody really take care of him? Mm -hmm. And the first count, we were blown away. He had like three individuals watching him. So he was in heaven, you know, mm -hmm. but we had a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. We weren't worried about it. And that was the first time that we could sincerely say that for our son who, who has autism, uh, he came in one day and he wanted to get the key to the cabin. And we always felt like that was a, just a safe area out there to just really let them be free, mm -hmm. let them explore. Because somebody was going to be watching them, you know, even if it's from a distance or right there with them. And, you know, he came to get the key and, and my husband was hesitant. I was like, let him go. And he went to do whatever he needed to do in the cabin and he came back and, and we was like, he came back, he came back. <laughs> you know, but oh, then of face. course, you know, we went back. Sure. He left the door. Oh, you know, he didn't <laughs> lock the door. It's okay. But it was that moment we said, you know, we can really breathe because he's getting something from camp. You know, all of our kids across the board, we're getting something from camp and being able to collaborate with parents mm -hmm. and to share the stories mm -hmm. and to just, you know, make those connections. It was like, you just had a, a village. It was it a is. village being created along the way. I like the way you use that word village there. Yeah. I really felt that there when I was there as well. Mm -hmm. And just that story there with the key, I, it, I see that it was a big thing for you and your husband. Yes. And I imagine it was a huge thing for your son. It was like, this is... Oh, one he had a proud look. We were remember. Yeah, he was... Yes. Yes. Like, you know, we had... Because you have this big window, you know, where everybody go in to eat at mm -hmm. and sometimes presentations. And we just remember seeing him. You know, I can't remember how young he was. And he had this big smile on his face. And he was just bopping back. And he was like, <laughs> he is just so proud. You can just tell, you know, he didn't articulate it. But just the look on his face, he knew that he had accomplished something. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we were like, you know, he's getting there. You know, we're we're grasping more than we could ever possibly grasp. Because even like for Cam and him, when we had um, Judy, Judy actually came to one of our son's uh, IEP meetings. And this was at the middle school level. And I remember being in the room, I think we probably had maybe five or six people. And Judy just had that look. <laughs> you know, it's the look is we're coming in here. We're going to take care of business it's, because it's... we know that Eric can do more than what they're allowing him to do. But it was amazing. It was just amazing even to just have that support and know that we could call on somebody. You know, like I said, even though we had we had a great advocate, but building the team around us, the village, that was the thing. And the hope teams. Oh my goodness. Uh, now yes. that is a story in itself. Yeah, we're gonna do a broadcast on that. Oh team. my goodness. I remember Henry telling us when we decided we were gonna do a hope team. And I remember talking with Henry on the phone and he we were following up and Henry says, Now don't forget, invite a hundred people. A hundred people. I remember me and my Jeez. husband, we were saying, I don't even know a hundred people. He was like, hundred people? We don't know a hundred people. He wants to invite a hundred people. But the purpose behind that was even if you went to invite a hundred people, you know, just, to, you know, how many would come. So at that point, I also remember Henry telling us when I called him, I said, Henry, we're not getting close to a hundred people, Henry. And Henry said, are you having EJ to invite them? And his level of ability you know, to get on the phone and, and Henry guided us in regards to help him to be able to do that because his sentence structure was choppy. But we said, you know what, let's ask him who does he know. All of a sudden, our little list, because we were doing the thinking for him, yes. because mm -hmm. once again, we were still learning. And when we passed those rings on to him, he started naming. And we was like, how does he know these people? Really? <laughs> and before long, it's like that team came together 
and his very first meeting and they were very clear mom dad you're gonna be in the back and we was like oh we can't talk this is gonna be hard yeah. you know, we're always a voice you know but we was like okay we're gonna trust them you know and of course henry you know and judy confident know what they're doing and you know and us loving them anyway and we remember them pulling our son in and he began to have a conversation and it wasn't for us to talk it was for him to talk mm -hmm. and i remember sitting there thinking i know henry knows he's he really can't carry a conversation how is he going to get at him what he needs to but he got enough enough during that time and then we went in for the meeting and we sat in the back room and when people began to come in it was at that moment, and there were people that came in we didn't expect. They were ones on the journey that gave us a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't so want we them just, there. We were shocked. But you know, like Henry kept reminding us, Mom, Dad, this is not your meeting. Mm. This is his meeting. You know, even from the point where it was for him to decide what he wanted to have as far as, you know, something for them to eat. If he wanted hot dogs or whatever, it was his meeting. And we did. We let him decide what he wanted us to have there. If he wanted whatever, that it was going to be that. But to enter the room and to pull everybody together and see this room filled with people. And we was like, all this time, there were more who cared than we realized. That was another level of the vision mm -hmm. from full life ahead mm -hmm. and then to be able to have them facilitate and you know share what they knew about him you know and hear about what what did he like what were his dreams and to hear different people say oh i didn't know that oh really we didn't know he you know knew things about computer and didn't have a neighbor um that was one of the things that really touched us we had a neighbor right there behind the fence and we had already, you know, spoken with them about our son and their daughter came up and said, thank you for inviting me. I understand EJ better now. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, because of the Hope team, he had his very first invite to a movie. To a movie? We, we wanted, oh, I believe yeah, I did cry too. because I was like, somebody got something from it. There were so many people and I was like, somebody finally invited him somewhere. Wow, I can't believe it. They invited him. They wanted him to come. And that opened up doors. He started going to movies. Eventually, he had his first sleepover. Because while we realized that we had to embrace the people who were going to care, still being protective. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have a vision, you have to be able to open your arms to people and give them an opportunity to love and to learn. And you've got to let go a little bit. Yes. Yes. That's got to let go. That could be mm -hmm. a hard part right there is that letting go. Yes, yes. I think the camp is a very safe place to do that, though. Yes. <clears throat> and you mentioned the community is bringing uh, the community together in the meeting, but also, you know, throughout that life. And you kind of mentioned that with camp as well, with your, um, all of your sons and daughters. Is it all sons? I have uh, two sons and one daughter. Two sons and one yes. daughter. So uh, all of your um, sons and daughters want to go to camp. And I imagine that it does wonders for the family unit as well. Just... You know, brothers and sisters learning how to, you know, better be a support, yes. uh, therefore, their brother, sister, family member. Well, we referred to camp on um, the first time that we, we would go there and thereafter, we said, this is vacation. Mm. We finally felt like we were on a vacation. <coughs> we were finally able to breathe mm -hmm. and just feel like we were free to think, to say it's such a non-judgmental camp to go there. I mean, you can lay your heart out there. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, one of the things I know that would come up every camp, I don't have to go around and say, this is my son that has autism. It wasn't about that. You know, this is my son. You know, you know, what is he into? What is mm -hmm. he like? It wasn't, oh, it wasn't, what's his problem? And so that was different. It was an opportunity to breathe, you know, and even start to reconnect, you know, as a married couple because you know we're always involved in our kids and so being able to have those moments you know they had the downtime and we could go off and we was like oh now what do we do and and now, i don't know what to do with this time though <laughs> you know we're, true, we're, we're, yeah, so we're, we're not used to you know we're not used to it and then of course i will say we love love the time when everybody just get to showcase and dance that was like the moment it didn't matter how you sung off key or whatever 
you were able to just enjoy yourself and just relax, you know, because it's like we hours of the night. I think we finally have to say we have to go to sleep, but yes. leave them in there. Yeah. It's okay. You know, let us know when you're ready to come back. You know, that moment, just seeing the smiles at camp and people leaving, like, is it over already? You know, we wanted to continue. You just wanted to eat all the learning that was taking place, mm -hmm. you know. Now, you said vacation, and I imagine that's something that um, would be a fear of mine is if, if you're used to being uh, next to your son or daughter uh, 24 hours a day in the community, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That would be a um, something that I'd be worried about going to camp. Is my son or daughter going to be safe? You know, those types of things. So from the camp perspective, how do you really make sure that um, that peer support is there. Volunteers. I mean, we cannot have our family weekends or camp without volunteers. They're integral. We'll have volunteers that come from um, University of Auburn and other colleges, um, Central Alabama Community College, and just folks that hear about us. And once a volunteer, pretty much always a volunteer. Um, they keep Great coming volunteers. back. They love it. They love it. And so there's always that kind of support in there. And if a person who comes, an individual needs um, extra support, they, they have that. Um, we, we'll call it one-on-one, -on -one, but a one-on-one's never truly a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. There'll be two volunteers or that individual that needs it. And so it also creates um, a very inclusive environment. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to, to clarify for everybody that our family weekends, they're that, that first word, family. Mm -hmm. It's a family weekend. It's not a weekend where you drop the, your right. child off or mm -hmm. whatever. It's for the family. And we love it when mom and dad and the kids can come. And, and, and families, there's different structures of families. It may be a grandmom. It might be a single mom. There's all kinds of families out there. But it is a family camp. Um, we start at the age of 13 for that individual that... Um, we're really looking at to give that hope back uh, that age of 13 with a disability. And as far as disability, pretty much any disability mm. that you can name, um, we don't limit that. And then the siblings, any age, we like to start at the age of five um, to make sure that we're able to attend to their needs. So we have a children's program, which would be the siblings and maybe some board staff kids or speakers and then we have a teen program so there's pretty much 13 and older who are in school and then the adult program which is um, 18 and older pretty much out of school so you might have a, a, a an adult child who's 18 <coughs> and still on a teen program because they're still in school all their kids go to school until they're 21 mm -hmm. and then we have the parent uh, the parent group and where we learn a lot. And so all these different groups, they're learning and interacting and enjoying each other and learning what their gifts, strengths are and getting their hope. It's just amazing. You were talking about the speakers. Yes. We have, the parents will have their sessions. We have an agenda. And we, when families register, it's one thing we ask them is like, what do you read? really need to know right now. where mm. you are or are you that's a really life? good thing is reaching out and getting that feedback mm -hmm. then you go and find those then we found that yeah. speaker and then like she said mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to talk to them one-on-one -on -one about where you are yeah and, you know with whatever that topic may be it might be that um you've really thought about guardianship and if that's something that you need it to do well we have somebody you could talk about guardianship and the wonderful alternatives to guardianship, <laughs> which I, I, I really prefer. And yeah. I feel like most that we don't always have to look at guardianship. A lot of folks don't realize that there are other That's ways to do yes. that. And so, and, and support and employment. I mean, as a side, the topics that go on, on you know, waivers, behaviors, babies, behaviors. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's just so much. And it's, not only those great speakers, but it's like she said, also the parents and getting to talk to parents that are where you are. Mm. And also to expand on that, the parents who have, were, who have been where you are and see yes. where they've progressed and the things, the amazing things that have happened in their lives. Like their son has gotten that job or, um, or living on their own or got 
um, brought it to the movies and, you know, as a social life yes. now. All that stuff's so huge to be able to see it happen in other people's lives. And like, yeah, we can do that. Kelsey can do yes. that. And, and to um, be able to come back, you know, yeah. this year. Because, yeah. you know, it was a joy to have come back, you know, on behalf of our organization and even to present and look at, you know, the families who are there and you can tell the first time parents and you just, <laughs> this joy just swells up inside because you're like, I have somebody I can connect with. I could tell from the look on their eyes that they are new and it helps them to see somebody else to come back who's been to the camp and is able to get something. Because anytime you go back, you know, you're, you're going to learn something. Every time. All time. Mm. I still learn. Every time. You know. That's one thing too I wanted to bring up too is family empowerment. What you just described is yes. that you've gone to camp, you've got your hope and, and, and your connections and you're learning all this stuff and you felt empowered when you yes. went back. You yes. have another family and you might hear us use that word a lot more at Full Life Ahead is that our family empowerment and um, you know, you just spread that hope. Yes. And it doesn't always happen to happen. Ha to happen at camp. It could be anywhere that, you know, you said, you know, help another family. Well, um, take it and constantly applying it because you're right. It was like, you know, we would leave camp. We would get the tools, the resources. We would know we had someone else also to reach out to and to be able to go back into a school setting and say, okay, I have this resource now. I have this okay. confidence, this insurance that wasn't there before because where you felt like maybe you're standing alone and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, we have a village behind our son. Mm -hmm, <laughs> Do we, we do. need to bring the village to the table? <laughs> and it may be um, other family members, full life ahead, providers right, exactly. that have been at camp. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really stay connected to all those players mm -hmm. in the field that can help our kids. We have to. Mm -hmm. And um, get buy-in from them and the support where they can in turn. And, and you know, it's just... Uh, Win win. You, you, you play that game that way. You mentioned that um, you can see first time, you, you know, first time families their first weekend there. Um, do you remember, both of you, do you remember kind of an aha moment where it was like maybe the world had been lifted off your shoulders during that first weekend and it was like this is very welcoming or another family had talked to you and shared an experience? But is there one specific um, point during your first weekend that stands out to you? I still have to go back to our conversation with Henry mm -hmm. because he said not everybody can say that to a parent but Henry had the tone and he had the look in his eyes and he had the love yes. in order for us yes. to hear that message that was the aha moment mm -hmm. the awakening moment for us and that was a conversation of what happens if you're not here right you know helping us to think you know and he, and he didn't leave us hanging there you know he he shared more with us and, and he himself, you know, gave us even more hope on the journey. And that was our aha moment. Mm. Man, that's hard for me. Is there any one moment that sticks I've out? I've been so many camps. <laughs> I know. I remember. <laughs> think about the first the one. The first one. I think one thing that um, I was just talking to someone the other day about this was um, it wasn't a... It was a board member who came up and was talking to me about Kelsey, and um, we were at the beginning of that journey of getting connected and trying to find our hope and really didn't know what we were looking for, that it was hope. <laughs> you know, you just don't know. You just want things to be better yeah. and um, for her and her life at that moment. And um, so you talk about the things that she can do and just talking to that board member and I'm talking about other family members and their successes and then relating back to well you know Kelsey she you know she has such momentum and drive she's so motivated and there is nothing this child can't do and um, to be given the direction that I needed to understand the things where we were at that moment and the things we needed to look yeah. forward to. Like, I didn't know what a Medicaid waiver was mm -hmm. and um, never heard of that. And to learn that, oh, well, this is another way that I can get support for Kelsey, especially as she gets older. 
to be more independent with the support she needs without me. That big yeah. question, what's going to happen yeah. when I'm gone? I mean, it's not that it wouldn't help while I'm here. Right. But, uh, you know, to think of those future things and put that in your house, I, I, in your mind. It's If we ask families in a group setting, you know, what's their biggest fear? That's the, that's the answer is what happens. And we mentioned uh, hope, and I'm, and I'm trying to remember, I remember helping other people to envision, and especially for us, you know, as parents, people can talk to you about what's possible, but then Kemp had speakers who came in. Uh, I remember one lady in particular uh, with visual challenges, but she was living on her own. She had roommates, and they would take her dancing. I remember the story they shared about lifting her out of the wheelchair and dancing with her on the dance floor. And once again, we were able to see someone, mm -hmm. you know, but then to also hear what was taking place in her life. And that's when you capture even more of the vision. Oh, I got one, I got one. So I remember this is kind of, it was big to me because Kelsey and I, I mean, we were always like two pieces of bubble gum. Me because I'm very protected of her, of her was, and I try every day not to be. <laughs> That, but it goes to think it's a process. It is. It's it really a continual is. process as a parent. But the first time I came, when I turned around and she wasn't nowhere to be seen. Mm. You know, it was like, I can do this, you know. <laughs> and, and, and she, you know, I saw her at a meal and I'm like, you know, come on, let's go eat. And she's like, uh uh. <laughs> She's hanging out with her friends. She's just exactly what oh she said. Goodness. I can't eat with my friends. I remember those days. Oh my I'm goodness. like, wow. yay for you. You know, I was like, what? But also take it back like, like you don't want to eat with me? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. But it was such a, um, it was an amazing moment for me at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that she was going to hang out and eat with her yeah. friends. Yes. And, uh. It's all yeah. about the food, yeah. okay? Oh, we Lord. were expecting, <laughs> we <laughs> seriously were, okay, you think about camp, we were thinking sack lunches. Yeah. When we came to the first Powered camp, eggs. we were shocked. We was like, oh, they're yeah, actually yeah. feeding us. Oh, yeah. And, and it, the cost is inexpensive. I share that with parents wherever I go. I say, I'm sorry, it's only $30 a person. I say, you have a cabin. Sleeping mm -hmm. arrangements are very comfortable. All mm -hmm. accessible. Yes. And to be able to get, you know, wonderful food, you know, by once again, volunteers, you know, giving their hard time and, and cooking and watching, you know, your children go off and be with other people. I'm like, oh, they don't have to sit with me while I'm eating. Wow. Okay. Well, you enjoy your friend, you know, whomever you met, you know, once again, a moment to breathe and to also realize because that helps to increase their socialization. Mm -hmm. You know, no longer do we have to, you know, hold on to them, but then they get to see what I am capable of doing, you know, and then the parent is able to see what they are capable of doing and then take it back and put it into action, continue to reinforce it. The growth is amazing. Oh, you know, my own daughter, I'm the director, how my own daughter has just like grown so much and it, it transfers back yeah. home into the community. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, I don't need help. <laughs> uh, or she'll even say, they tried to help me, mom. She <laughs> 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 uh, uh, they, they don't know. I said, no. You know, they, they don't understand. You know, we like it when people ask if they can help, whether they're just going ahead and and trying to help, you know, but she's become a little miss independent, which is, is, is a huge blessing. It sounds like a mental shift comes out of these weekends. It like does. it's it something does. that you, you know what you don't know, but then there's this whole dark area where you have no idea that you don't mm -hmm. even know it. And exactly. The, and I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. And then it's like, I'm hearing the stories that there's just a total mental shift and like an aha moment yes. coming out of these weekends that... <clears throat> That comes back after the weekend into the home and into the community and, and the social network there. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, you could go your whole life without having that kind of moment. Yeah. You yeah. know, you have to be, you have to put yourself in those types of situations to learn from. Yeah. Um, that's so. the secret is putting yourself there. And that means you got to get 
Come on, and register for camp. Yes, because <laughs> yes. we're, I know, it's like when I'm out there and I tell you, know, people, are you aware of the Full Life Ahead Foundation? You must attend their camp. You know, of course, we're not supposed to dictate what somebody does, but it's like, you, you must. must. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, this is such a, uh, I'm going to say it's a, it's a diamond. A diamond out there that I just crave for people to go to participate because it's life changing. Mm -hmm. You you cannot possibly go to camp and say you won't leave with something. Uh, you and then you know, and you will desire to give it back to somebody else because you don't want to keep the information that you've learned. You want to, you know, get hope to somebody because sometimes people say, Well, you know, I can't get it there, I have my kids, what am I gonna do? And it's like there is a way, yeah. you know, because even the drive there was wonderful. Now, where is it? Um, it's at Lake Martin at Children's Harbor. It's Alex City. It's like you're going down two way towards Auburn. So from Birmingham, it's about an hour and a half, two hours away, yeah, kind of east toward Auburn there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is it's it a beautiful drive? It's on the lake. Yes, it's on the mm. lake, and I just envision, you know. <laughs> Your accommodation, every family gets their own cabin. Really? And there's a beautiful porch yes. on everyone. And it's a covered porch with ceiling fans mm -hmm. and rocking chairs. And you can just sit out there and relax and enjoy the quiet overlooking lake. And go for walks. It's all accessible. And the meals. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I got to give a shout out to Ryan <laughs> for conducting Ooh, that. Yeah, uh, right? Yeah. He is so awesome. One of our awesome volunteers. It, the, the food is awesome. It is beyond. Mm -hmm. We have bacon. That's one of my favorites. And um, now we, you know, we have robust dinners and, yes. and all that. Um, the amount of baked goods that you can have that are there yeah, on the. Uh, they stay on top of it. They really try to make sure you know that parents, you know, all the participants really, you know, have what they need without having to worry about it. Yes. And and going back to what um, you were saying about you know peace of mind when you go to camp. The volunteers that they invest in to really train and prepare them for the camp. It's like by the time you meet the volunteer who has been assigned to your child, it's like when you meet them, you, you don't, you know, it's like automatically, you know, mm -hmm. I can trust this person. And the great thing about it as well, because, you know, as parents, when it's the first time the child is going away, you think somebody's going to come to you. It's like they won't last long with that person. Yeah. And they don't, they don't come back. It's like the volunteers right. have it so right. under well, control. So it's not like you show up and, and you just kind of like, oh, yeah, we're going to pair you guys up for the weekend. But you guys have gone through this process of pairing up families with volunteers. Right. Yes. Look, all of that is done well ahead and with lots of forethought. Hmm. Um, it, and it works nicely. Uh, one thing I want to say is that when families are thinking about coming, a lot, a lot of times when I talk to one, they might say, "Well, John, he he has to have a schedule. He does not want to change it. He, is, I can tell you, he's just not going to adjust well to camp. We'll end up leaving. I just don't think we should even try." And I tell them this, and I put it out on the line. I'll say, "Oh." I'll give you your registration fee back out of my pocket and pay your guest money home if y'all end up having to leave. That's mm -hmm. how much I believe that you're going to want to stay and that John's going to love it. And I haven't had to yeah. <laughs> so far ever have to do that. I, I haven't. And I have said that a lot, a lot to families, you know, when they have hesitation about how it might work out for them. And they end up loving it and coming back. And coming back um yeah we had to make room we loved it so much we kept coming and coming and then finally they started having a waiting list mm -hmm. and then we, we found our me and my husband we said okay we have to move out the way to let somebody else now have their moment and so our family was like mom we're not going i'm like i'm sorry let somebody else have a moment i'm sure we'll return because that was wonderful when it happened because word did it get out yes yeah, yeah we can get into some huge waiting lists we don't have a waiting list for a February camp that's coming up. You have an upcoming camp? Mm -hmm. It's um, February the 1st through the 3rd. Okay. And um, you can still register. We have um, cabins available. We'd love it if you could come. Like she said, it's $30 a person. Um, just go to fulllifeahead.org, and you'll see a little drop down menu. It'll say camp, and there's a line to register. Just click and, and register under the family registration, or if you want to volunteer. There's volunteer registration there too. 
Nice. So uh, for a family of five, it is $150 um, to attend. And then <clears throat> we've been talking kind of about the activities, both for parents, for the family, and for the individual. But these aren't all happening at the same time. Um, in this, or they're happening at the same time, but not in the same area. So you're kind of, I'd like to kind of go over a day in the life of um, <clears throat> a parent um, and their son or daughter uh, yeah. during camp. So maybe if you could kind of speak about that. We'll take uh, the parent first. What does it look like waking up? When do you wake up? Well, I wake up earlier, but um, so we all start, um, people will arrive around three. Although in the summer, we, we'll have arrivals we'll start at one, so you can jump in the pool if you want to. Now this is on a weekend. It's okay. a weekend. On a Friday. Okay. On a Friday. And so um, he'll come in, um, meet um, Claire in the camp office and she'll give you everybody that's new to camp. If you're if you don't have this workbook and you're new to camp, you'll get a free workbook. And this is how full life I had started. Jen and Judy, y'all pull it back and there's mm -hmm. another broadcast about the workbook, so I won't go into that. But if you don't have one, you get the workbook. And um, we'll get your own little cabin. All this back here is, I put all this stuff here because our theme this time is you are a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do a lot of art. We're gonna have a lot of fun with art of this camp. It's gonna get messy. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> lots of butcher paper on the floor, tables and everywhere. Yep. Lots of mess paper. So, um, you'll arrive and you'll get the keys to your cabin. You'll meet that um, volunteer who might be doing your one-on-one -on -one if you have that. And we'll help you to your cabin if you need, you know, with volunteers. Help you even unload your car and make up your bed if you need that. Mm -hmm. And we'll start our sessions. We'll start about five. And we'll have um, usually icebreakers or something like that, really fun. And the kids will go to their sessions, like I said before, you know, there's the children and the teen and the young adults and the parents. And so we kind of break away from each other. Mm. And then we'll come back and we'll have dinner, which is always <laughs> yum. And we might do another session. And on Friday nights, we usually do like s'mores and get around the fireplace or even if the weather's allowing it, we'll get outside and have like a, we'll um, roast the marshmallows and make their s'mores outside. Yeah. Kind of end our day that way, get up in the morning, and start <laughs> over, and have that I, breakfast. I remember uh, E.J. making his first s'mores. Oh yeah, and I was a nurse wreck because you know they had the fire out there, mm. but it was like, Mom, he's okay. Yeah, got him. And oh my goodness, did they have fun yeah. out there with the s'mores? Yeah, Kelsey loves that, and she's got these short arms. She's a tiny person. She's a small person, and so you're like, how close is she going to have to get to that fire? <laughs> Do that marshmallow rest it, but you know, they, they were so sure, protective. I don't worry yeah. a bit mm -mm. about what's going on, even around the, the around mm -hmm. the fire. But and then we'll have sessions all on Saturday. We'll have our breakfast or lunch, and we'll have a free time and um, the famous dance party <laughs> that everybody loves. We'll have a DJ, it gets wild, it gets strobe wild. lights drop it down from the true. ceiling. I mean, I'll go out to my cabin. I've gone out to my cabin, and you can hear the thump and see the lights <laughs> coming out. <laughs> it looks, oh. you know, it's like we got a disco going on there. Yeah. The kids love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. And we're talking like total joy, freedom, yeah. friendship, all that stuff. It's like a combination of just that hope you get mm -hmm. and it's just like all that happiness is just like you're able to it's like a mosh pit of joy and, yeah. and fulfillment yeah, like right in that moment with your when you're with your friends and you're yes. just kind of vibing and mm -hmm. i've seen that on the on the faces there yeah that's yeah. saturday night and that that goes from right after dinner till i'm gonna say like four o'clock in the morning I don't know what time <laughs> Yeah, they would. They would go to four in the morning, but we have to call it, they call it 10 a.m. because we have to get up the next day and um, have some more fun and learn some more and, you know, hang out with other parents. And, you know, you're having the one-on-one -on -one times with those speakers and just sitting and talking to, like, Henry or Judy or myself or other families. And it's just incredible all that happens. It's, you can't, I, you can't just... Um, I couldn't sit here and write it all down. It's yeah, and so even if someone read it, they wouldn't get it. No, you got to get it. You got to get that experience there in person. And it. it's so inexpensive once again because I remember we had a one-on-one one -on -one with uh, Dr. Babcock. 
Mm. You're talking As about a imagined. psychologist, okay? Mm. Who's giving his time to you. $30 is nothing compared oh, no, to what no, you no. give on the camp. No. And, the time. and they don't rush you. You know, their their heart, right? That time that you have with them because it, it everybody, you sign up for a time block mm -hmm. and you go back for your time session to meet one-on-one -on -one with that individual. And they mm -hmm. have you full attention. That's your moment it that you have with time. them. And that's right there at that cap window. We'll have, you know, a line of parents signing up where they can have that opportunity. And it's a rare opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just don't get that. I mean, it's hard to call that 800 number. Yeah. We have the people, the best folks that know that stuff where you were calling that 800 number trying to, to get some information. So it's great. I think that's a, a really, you hit the, the nail on the head there. So let's say a family of four, you know, uh, is $120 and you spend one hour, you know, just, just focus on that one hour with uh, an, um, an expert in the field that you're looking exactly. to gain some knowledge from. Yes. It's huge. That's like mm -hmm. tenfold return on yes. on your money right there. Mm -hmm. And that that's not talking about anything else in the camp, the experiences exactly. that are going on. That's just for that the hour. hour. Yeah. yeah. The t shirt, you get a t shirt. Oh yes. I mean, yeah. hello. Mm -hmm. I like <laughs> so it's all inclusive. I mean, it's just it's just a wonderful blessing. Uh, you know, that you're talking about feeling blessed in what you do. I feel very blessed that we can continue giving that gift to families and that thing that changed our lives <coughs> I mean, hello. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing that that we can do that. And that, and I just want more families, I want more new families to come so they can experience that and be empowered and get their hope. Um, stay, you know, come on Friday and pack it up to go home at 1130 on Sunday and just leave totally changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So camp is from uh, about three o'clock on Friday till about noon on Sunday, mm -hmm. and um, during uh, you'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that's all great food, by the way. I've I've been there a couple times, and the food. You've just... been in the kitchen. I've been yes. in the kitchen. I've seen the <laughs> it's works. Real food. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, in between uh, the eating periods, you'll break off into four groups that we kind of went over there, and each group will have their own activities um, in between the eating periods there. And then during the eating periods, everybody kind of comes back together. You talk with your family, or maybe they don't want to talk with you, and they right. want to go do yeah, their own still, thing. Still, but yeah. <clears throat> And then that carries through until Sunday. Um, I, I think it's magnificent all the way around. Uh, uh, I was very fortunate to be part of it. Um, and w when we met, I was a volunteer. Yeah. Um, and it, it changed my life just being a part of it out there and learning. Um, you know, because being outside of the community, really when I first came to Alabama, I was kind of outside the community. Um, I have an aunt um, that has a disability, but I didn't have much interaction with other people in the community. Um, and it was kind of, I'm scared. I don't know how to interact. Yeah, I, it was just something that I, I didn't have much experience with. Right. You know, and so it, it, was, it was a blessing for me to be like, what, yeah. get out of your head. Just be there. Right. <laughs> you know, right. this is awesome. You're not here to impress anyone. Yeah. You know, you're there just to be to be who you are, be accepted for who you are, and your child for who they are. I mean, you know, they may scream out, but you know, it's funny, if someone were to scream out in a um, restaurant, everybody turn around. Right. If somebody screams out at, at camp, it's just like, we just mm -hmm. keep on, we might, you know, we know things okay. You don't skip a beat there. Right, it's like, it's just, <laughs> this, 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 pass right. the butter. It's totally, yeah, pass yeah. the butter, everything's cool here. And you mentioned um, a key thing, you know, coming to camp, it actually does give you an opportunity to maybe be around individuals that have different disabilities that you may not be familiar or know how to interact with. There may be a communication board, and that did happen at camp. Mm. You know, being able to communicate with somebody who's using a communication board, hands-on, and knowing it's okay to approach and talk and have somebody to um, educate you in some things that maybe you don't know. So that's another level of camp that I would say is a part yes. of. Yes, there's all kinds of running going on mm. at camp. Um, <coughs> one thing I wanted to address is the, the part with the programs is our program leaders cream of the crop and so they're there to um, help your child and their siblings you know to um, to learn how very awesome they are 
you know, they'll work on doing social skills. They'll do fun things like skits and um, just it's a place for them to open up. Mm -hmm. There's some great volunteers in there, and most of the, a lot of the volunteers are um, coming out, re going into rehab studies or um, special ed and all these things. And so there's a lot of engagement there, and those volunteers pull so much out of those kids that I or you or the parents could never learn. Yeah. Because it's the peers, you yeah. know, and it's a, it's amazing the friendships that are made that way, and the quality of those programs are just awesome. And um, we're there, you know, we're there to make make sure that everybody's getting what they need out of it, and have the supports they need to to be able to do that. So, just another little factoid. Yeah. So if anybody knows um, somebody that is in college, and you said, what, what are kind of the majors there that a lot of the volunteers come from? Um, rehab studies is big in New Auburn. Um, we have pretty much, you know, there might be somebody that's um, totally unrelated subject that matter studies that um, are going into to that. So, um, that are coming in and, and volunteer. Mm -hmm. But I think rehab studies is the biggest yeah. um, that we have. That <clears throat> and I know that the uh, the volunteers want to be there, but also another thing is they get a lot of um, credits for courses for uh, their yes. for their school. So if you if anybody knows any uh, college students or family members that are in college and looking to kind of fulfill some of those course credit uh, qual uh, requirements, um, definitely volunteer at Full Life Ahead. And you sign off at the end of the. Uh, at the end of the weekend there for the hours that they've yes, done. Yes, you get a lot of practical hours. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it depends on when you come, but you get a lot of hours that way. That's just something new. Yeah, yeah. So, or I don't know if y'all noticed say, this. I'm just me. laid back as going to be. I'm <laughs> Paul was going to be. So, we turned our heads just a second yet, and it was because Henry, who we've been <laughs> talking about, came to the door and he did this. <laughs> this right here and he's wanting hold me. it up hold yeah, it closer it's, it's, yeah I don't know if you can see that that is our plan for success and I will uh, link to this yeah in the in the YouTube video there so you guys can see it uh, a little bit later here yes I'm gonna go through it just quickly I don't know how much time we've taken or have that so <coughs> we start with camp that's where you catch your vision um, which y'all heard a lot about. It's very, it's so empowering. And, um, you might even start calling it, you know, family empowerment weekend or something because it is like atomic. It's awesome. And then, you know, the workbook. We also have the workbook. So we start with camp. This is our plan for success. Go to camp. Go two or three times to camp. Yes. Use this workbook. Um, sit down at the kitchen table um, with your child, your young adult, when I say child, my I have three children, and they're all my children, but they're in the thirties and mid twenties, but they're still my child. So I don't, I'm not trying to put them down in any way. But anyway, get into that workbook. It is just a great guide. There's so many things in here. It's like you know that you learn that you really didn't know you needed to know, um, and just a guide to. Um, the how to's and where we're forced and things that resources that you can take advantage of. How to, you know, do the best with an IEP or about Medicaid waivers, all just everything in there. And then we um, have discovery and our hope teams. These kind of come together. You can't have one without the other. It's like an Oreo. Um, discovery is going when I, I go out to a home and I really get to know so I was coming out and you were doing a discovery and then a hope team. I get really get to know Alex and I'd like to talk to you and, and your your parents about what your strengths or interests are, um, what do you do at home, you know, what kind of activities do you do outside of the home, what chores do you have, what interests do you have? I mean you love Legos, you know, are you really good with your hands? Can you build you know, you build birdhouses, yeah. you know, just anything. And um, really get to know you on a, a whole deeper level. Um, then, you know, we'll go into hope teams. That discovery, you know, gets on all, out into the community. It's more, um, it's a couple of steps process. You know, first in the home and then 
finding out who your connections are in the community and getting a community and knowing all those players in your life. Then you have a hope team. And hope teams are there like you've experienced. Mm -hmm. It can be to meet an immediate need. The most common reason we have a hope team for a person is because they want a job. Mm -hmm. They want to work. They want it to have purpose, a reason to get up every morning. It's not all about the money. Yeah. Of course it is. We enjoy money as part of it, but it's about having your purpose and, and having friends and, and all those things. And so we'll get together. I'll share my discovery. You'll have your 100 people there and your hot dogs <laughs> or whatever. And it's really not 100 people. Uh, I haven't been one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plus two. Uh, but... Um, and, and those people, they just share about, you. we engage those folks about what is this person's strengths, um, what are their interests, and brain, start brainstorming and say, you really want a job, Alex, and you're really good at woodworking, and but you also like to do art and um, the Lego thing, and you're good at organizing. And when I went in, well, you showed me your bedroom over there, and I know every one of your DVDs are like an alphabetical order. Alphabetical. Yeah. Dust it mean, off. They, don't touch them. Though. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 it's perfect. Yeah. That's why mine is. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. But, so, well, I bring all that forth, and, and so we find out, we discover a lot of things that you are able to do and what your interests are, and we share that with the team, mm -hmm. and you start brainstorming things that you can do in the community, because, um, Hermit, your next door neighbor, he stays in a lot, but he still has, you know, this friend who who owns a cabinetry shop, mm -hmm. and uh, you might have an opportunity to go intern there, kind of to see what you can do, mm -hmm. working on cabinets. I mean, it's amazing, you know, Hermit never came out really, but mm -hmm. yeah, but he shared this great resource, and so we just bring that team together, and it's amazing what that networking can do. To make a change in your life, just reaching out to your community and your family. And then also using that hope team for that question that we yeah. always said, that, that fear whether that all the families have, what happens after I'm gone. Mm -hmm. That hope team can actually become that person's board of directors mm -hmm. for their life. Mm -hmm. Just keep it going, keep people informed what's going on, have them back over. We don't want to just have one hope team. We just want to keep people involved and updated and and um, in that person's life. Oh, we didn't share where, because that's one of the questions oh, I would yeah, get okay. asked. Oh, yeah, okay. You want to tell me? You know, at least for, now for us. Does it, it could, you out? Do, well, well no, because it does, but... Well, it, was, it wasn't in her home, because, um, you know, the desire is to have it, you know, in a yeah, comfortable, right. you know, personable setting. But we, we chose not to because, once again, we knew that some of the school team would be coming and we did not want them in our home mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah, that, yeah. And so, thankfully, we had the Arkansas Shelby County who had opened up their business area for us to have it there. It was hosted there. The first, first one was hosted there. So, you know, you can have it wherever you pretty much yes. would like to as long as it's comfortable to set in. We want people to be comfortable. Yeah. Where they are. You could do like a local library or something like that if they had a big enough room. If they right? yeah, 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 access. We'll look there too. Mm -hmm. So the Hope Team, <clears throat> I mean, I, that can be done at any point. But I would say just from our conversation, if you're interested or during that, um, if your son or daughter is in that age group, there's an upcoming camp February 1st through the 3rd. This would be your first step. It is your first step. This is your first step. Go to the Full Life Ahead Family Weekend Camp and just jump into the community, start learning, start experiencing. And then all these other things, they start to kind of fall into place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes. yeah. It takes such a load off, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, it, it starts falling in place. Mm -hmm. And camp is that first step to that whole process. And, and it, um, it can really take a load off. In so many ways, because you, you're you're there and you're connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. Community involvement, because it was something that you had said, which was important. Because we can tend to once again keep things more so in, in our home, because mm -hmm. we become more, you know, very protective. But community involvement, inclusive, right. you mentioned inclusive setting at camp. Mm -hmm. It's not a segregated setting where it's just everybody that has a diagnosis. Right. But yeah, you yeah. have a variety of individuals, diverse. Very so, diverse. You know, an opportunity. But the goal, you know, one of the goals of many is involvement 
in the community because I also I think there was you know at the camp they were saying no does he go to a store take him more to the store for people in the community to get to know who he is and and that works it really works because people build it that one on one and then you can kind of stretch that apron string a little bit more along the way mm -hmm. yeah it's huge. huge it kind of kick starts it there so anybody that uh, <clears throat> is watching or is watching this video between well, well, even February 1st isn't the only camp of the year. No. So there are how many camps throughout the year? We do three a year. Three a year. I'm going to put my glasses on because I don't want to um, mix my dates up. Mm -hmm. so we do three a year, and there's always one at the beginning of the year, our winter one is, and this one is February the 1st to the 3rd. We have our summer camp, which is June the 28th through the 30th this year. And then November is the um, 1st to the 3rd. So there'll be three every year, and um, pretty much those same months, mm -hmm. and um, they're always themed. Like I said, this one's going to be our masterpiece. You know, we might do an '80s theme. It, you never know what we're gonna come up with. <laughs> our T-shirts are always so cool. Yeah, we have the best girl, <laughs> Michelle Barclay, does our T-shirts. Awesome, uh, awesome. You'll want to wear it everywhere and when you do you gotta tell people about full yeah. life ahead and, and, and share us but we'd love y'all to come to camps and like you said it is truly camp is the first step through our process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. come to camp and and get all these other things the work <coughs> that the discovery and the hope and then you'll be empowered mm -hmm. you'll be an empowered family and that circle can go back help others and come back and um it's just it's just it's better than sloth bread. Mm. You know, it's one of those um, secrets that we need to share more. And I would say if you have the uh, weekend of the first and third open, go to this one. Don't wait because there can be a waiting list during the mm. summer or even in the fall there. Right. Um, so if you have the opportunity, it is well worth the money that you're going to spend. And it's very, um, uh, it's not as expensive as you think. Like you said, it's only $30 a person. Yeah. You get your own cabin for the entire weekend yeah. with your family there. Um, it's very accessible. You're on Lake Martin, yes. which is awesome. Right. Don't pay for your food. You don't pay for anything outside of $30 unless you want to bring a little money. We'll have a little camp store there um, that'll help support what we do. A lot of fun things that you can buy. Um, you might want to go to the thrift store. Children's Harbor has a thrift store there. Help support them. You know, Children's Harbor supports us. Mm -hmm. Um, by letting us use her, their facility, and so um, and the rooms are spacious to me. Oh, it's awesome because we yeah. are we are a family of five, and you know they have the bunk beds and they're the single beds, and you can rearrange and you know we put it back every time we leave, and you know sometimes somebody probably wonder because we say okay who's going to be beside us, how are they going to be. And then finally, it's like that fear goes away because <laughs> once somebody comes out of their door, and if you're there. It's like you, you just with somebody like you've met before, even though it's your first time meeting mm -hmm. them, you know, just to have them on and say hi. And yeah. they still, you know, they respect you and give you your space if you want the space and not have a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to wake up and look at, you know, the, the mist above the lake and oh, that peaceful beautiful. view to start your day. Yeah. I love that view. It <laughs> it's is so gorgeous. beautiful. It's it really is. gorgeous. What a <coughs> we're blessed to have that place to go to with families and I mean it's just part of it of the whole experience is that time of respite and peace mm -hmm. we all need we all need that so yeah. I'm gonna uh we're gonna kind of wrap it up here <clears throat> and um at this point in um our speaking I'd like to kind of hand it over and for any uh family members or any anybody in the community that hasn't been to camp as a parent, um, what would you like to say to them now? I haven't. Go come to camp. Yeah. Uh, push past the fears. Yes. You know, and if you have any fears or having concerns, call and talk with them, you know, to get that peace of mind. You know, take the first step because too often, you know, even in the line of work that I do, individuals wait until their young adult is exiting out of high school. Mm. What a great opportunity now to learn a lot. It's not too late. It's never too you know, late. Ever, exactly. ever, you know, ever. Make that step. It's worth it. We've had um, um, young folks as young as 52, you know, in our adult program. And, you know, I think that's pretty darn young. 
um, considering I'm 55, but um, it's never too late, mm -hmm. ever too late to, to find your hope and, mm -hmm. and to find your purpose and to get involved in your community, to just to have that sweet freedom that everybody, and God's given our everybody wants to have that life, that full life. <clears throat> Mrs. Brown, I think you had a really good point. If you're watching this and you have questions, call Full Life Head right now. Exactly. Right now, today. 205-439-6534. I'll give you my cell phone number. Truly. I don't know if you would put that out there <laughs> on the air. I have, I'm going to put it out there because it is a work cell, right? And I can silence it when I'm going to bed. So it's 205-261-1235. And truly, really call me. I, um, I've been there and done that. I remember going to my first camp. I was a little nervous mm -hmm. because you're there and there's all these other families and stuff. But, you know, once you walk in there and you smell that bacon when you, walk, <laughs> when you go into breakfast and, and, and people are just milling around and laughing and talking, it's easy just to blend in, to make friends and, and um, just feel comfortable in that home. And, um, and you get fired up. Yeah. And um, empowered. It's just it's an amazing process that we would love everybody to take part in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and today you've heard uh, the story of what Full Life Ahead Family Camp uh, does for individuals and families from two moms that it's had a big impact on. And really, I would say, you know, kind of altered the life course, yeah. you know, in the long term. And when you look mm -hmm. back at you know, if you were on this path and a little altercation, you know, it, it, I mean, 20 years down the line is a lot different than yeah. it, it would have been if you hadn't. Been How would her life have been if we had not gone to camp? Yeah. Mm. Would Kelsey be at her job right now? Um, would she have the friends she has now? Would she, uh, what would I be doing right now? Mm -hmm. It would have been so different. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I wouldn't have, but she may not even be reading right now. I mean, it would be real. It makes me think of gray clouds and <laughs> depression. I can't imagine. <laughs> it would, I mean, truly, it would have been so different. You know, it really would have been different. I'll say if I hadn't been going to camp, we wouldn't be here right now doing this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. It's crazy how that works. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Connecting the resources, you know, mm -hmm. the ongoing resources. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about. And we're big on connecting folks. Mm -hmm. That's what we need, is to be connected. Yep. I think that's one thing that we do very well. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Um, are there any closing statements, anything that we didn't talk about um, that you'd like to kind of mention at this point? Mm -hmm. Just feel free to visit the website to mm -hmm. learn more at fulllifeahead.org and um, call us if you need to. We're here. And once again, if register. you need hope, what a great opportunity to connect with Full Life Head Foundation. Mm -hmm. Once again, life changing. Guaranteed. <laughs> um, so it's in uh, three weeks, February 1st through the 3rd. So go to fulllifehead.org, go over to the Family, Keep, uh, Family Camp Weekend tab, uh, and then there'll be a button for uh, registration. If you have questions, always call in. Call in today, call in this week. Um, don't sit back and wait for things to happen. So. I would like to uh, thank you both for coming on today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and end this broadcast when I click on stop streaming. Um, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for viewing and, and being with us here today. Uh, we have another broadcast later this week with uh, the Smith family and um, excited about that as well. So hopefully I uh, will see you uh, on Thursday at 4 o'clock.